Special event alert. Get on your feet and run. This is the Late for Changeover Show, your weekly space news and variety show. Show, show. I'm your host, Marty Smith, and I'm joined by Mr. History, Eric Perrott. Fellas, it's good to be back. Our man in the closet, Jake Wall. What's going on, guys? And Big Vern, Mike Johns. All right, all right, all right. We're here to bring you the latest headlines and updates pertinent to all Guardians and to the other lesser branches as well. So take your seats, get informed, and have a laugh as we present Late for Changeover. Gentlemen, Super Bowl, Super Bowl, Super Bowl. Did you guys make any money off it? Oh, wait, wait. Happy Fat Tuesday, first off, since we're recording this on Tuesday Tuesday for tomorrow. So happy Fat Tuesday. Yeah. I Um, lost 120 bucks. Did you really? Nice. Yep. That did you take too. Did you take it straight up or did you take points? Uh, I gave two points to my brother in law. Lost to twenty there and put a hundred dollar in squares and lost the roll. Ah, squares. That's yeah, not yeah. too bad. What What'd you get when you got your squares? You're like, ah, fuck. <laughs> That's what fives. <laughs> I didn't even look at them and shit. <laughs> like, come on, man. Damn. It's always the one who. It's always like some wife who hates football or you know somebody like that who will win the big square who will get yeah. a, get a one or a yeah. seven or yeah. something like that um yeah. so, i went down to the vfw and uh we bet on random bullshit oh yeah my table. <laughs> we're like one dollar bets on bullshit and somebody was like, Usher's taking his shirt off. I was like, fuck, no, he's not. <laughs> he's taking his shirt off. We, had Co- we had Coke or Pepsi. We had which branch was going to yeah. advertise first. We were. It was just all fun, just BS like That's that. That's pretty cool. We That's do that same good. thing with the Masters tournament, man. Will they make this? Oh. Part? Will so-and-so's wife show up? That kind of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and well, there, there was another bet where, is there a T-Swift showing? before any other celebrity after the game started and and kansas city was down we're like t-swift or uh, another yeah, celebrity, celebrity showing yeah i don't even remember seeing another celebrity oh oh, oh there was a bunch yeah there was a bunch but yeah, yeah beyonce and jay-z mm-hmm. um i don't remember seeing them so but i wasn't watching that they're during the halftime show yeah. most of them all yeah. rudd um Speaking of golf, what was that Arizona tournament where they where the drunk ran out on the? Did you <laughs> watch waste. that? Or did you? Oh, yeah. that? It wasn't one the drunk; waste. it was a bunch of drunks. Everyone oh, there was. got wasted. Yeah, they, yes, were they like, adver- don't they advertise that tournament as like the party tournament or some shit? Yeah, like that? yeah. So, well, and, like, this will be the last like year. Three arrests. This will be the last year. Cow, fifty three. Yeah, they kicked out like two hundred people, and then a bunch of people riot on the golf course. Well, it wasn't necessarily a riot. It was just a bunch of people being assholes. They were talking shit to golfers. Um, a bunch of people were getting were taking off their shirts and sliding down hills because it had rained a lot. So the nice. mud started caking up. And the mud That's meant the that people couldn't get in. So a lot of ticket holders that wanted to get in couldn't get in because it was all fucked up. And uh, So it turned into yeah. – what was the Adam Sandler golf movie? So it turned into that. Happy right? Gilmore. Happy Gilmore with all his fans in the, in the gallery. Basically, yeah. Yeah, they have talked about in real life. So they're going to change yeah. the whole outcome of it for next year because the golfers really? were upset. Zach Johnson was fucking pissed. He's like, "This is bullshit." Oh, you know? really? Shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The golfers were. Yeah, the golfers were not liking it. Damn. Damn. It, they went overboard this year. They really did. Yeah. Well, you piss off a bunch of millionaires, you know. Then, mm. Of course, they're going to make the difference, right? Yeah. Uh, commercials. <laughs> what did you think of the commercials? <laughs> Gentlemen, I love the one where the Eagles, the Ravens, and the freaking Seahawks were flying. Yep. Damn, Mike, you mentioned that one. I didn't. Yeah, that's oh, one of my honorable my mentions. That was a good one. That's, I didn't see the whole first quarter because my wife scheduled that time to fly in from uh, Texas, so I had to go pick her up. So no, I had to listen to it on the radio. So I didn't see all the probably best ones. That was great. That um, shit was funny. I liked. Uh, I did like the the Uber Eats one. Where you forget something. Oh, I yeah. thought that was pretty oh, cool. Yeah. Dung Kings. Dung, Dung Kings, Kings, of course, was pretty cool. Great. Yeah, the Dung Kings was my favorite. I thought that one was the funniest. 
And uh, I liked the Michael Sarah one. The Sarah really? view. The oh, v. God. That was, you would. That is so because up Because Sarah down. V is so out of the norm, and then Michael Sarah is so way far out. Yeah, if a guy it advertising. Me up. Yeah, I don't know why. Did you guys see the T-Mobile with Jason Momo? Yeah, I, 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 uh, it went I, on I don't, long. I don't like those T-Mobile ones with those two guys anyway. Cause I'm like, that shit they, was funny, man. I'm telling you the way he was doing the, <laughs> the flash dance kind of thing. <laughs> or he did at the end anyway. Yeah. So for worst, I've got Tem you, you guys oh. familiar with Tem you? They freaking threw out what four or five different or four or five four, the exact four same standard ads that they play on regular TV now. You know they attack my YouTube feed and shit, but uh, yeah, yeah, they were they were standard commercials and they played them four times. People on Twitter were were blowing up on that shit. What is and, that? Uh, it's like a it's supposed to it's a new like Amazon type service the and cheap, they're going to try to compete with Amazon. Let's good luck. Cheap Amazon or like yeah. a Wish type. <laughs> type website well it's a bullshit i'm not gonna buy it not not stuff. Stuff. i didn't know which ones <laughs> you guys like so i only got a couple Dude, um, deadpool thank you i didn't know funny. you could get all this stuff on uber eats yeah. i remember that well you know what they say in order to remember something you gotta forget something else make a little room and that's how i remember uber eats has that coffee so by forgetting something else gets in the chair <laughs> and he sticks his yeah. head in the chair a what? Remember when you used to be a pepper lady? Wasn't it the cinnamon sisters? Basil babes? Paprika girls? No, that's absurd. Jen! <laughs> hey! Uh, uh, oh. Um, okay. Can we not... <laughs> Did someone doodle on my face? I'm so glad I remember <laughs> Uber Eats has office supplies, but I feel like I forgot something. Oh yeah. my oh, god. That guy. Say... <laughs> <laughs> it's not coming off! Give me hands. Worked together for 10 years. 10 years. Yeah. You were great. You still don't know, do you? I don't. Right. Like, I forget yeah. 10 years of my life. I hate this town. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the I'll play the halftime show someday, man. That jelly what, roll was funny. What'd you think yeah, of the, uh, the halftime show? I liked it. <clears throat> I yeah, did, I too. I, did I, I thought the dancing was cool. I thought the... Uh, the, they came out on effing roller skates. I was like, whoa. That was pretty cool. That, that was, was pretty impressive. good, man. Yeah. I'll tell you, did you see all the con controversy between the two national anthems, the black national anthem and the other no. one? No. Woo! That's no. still a battle. It's Everybody's tough. up Was there a controversy? That. Oh, they just booed her, clapped for Reba because yeah, yeah. it was the national. So it was just yeah, it's people on didn't stand up and stuff. I'll tell you what, I was not impressed with Reba. Reba's done it better lots of times, and I was not impressed with hers last night. I think her yeah, the Reba sound was off on it. Game. What was the best national anthem you've ever heard somebody sing? Oh, Whitney Houston. Yeah, yeah, me come too. on. Yeah, for me too. Yeah, that's. Everybody. I thought Lady Gaga was pretty close, uh, but the way Whitney did it, um, and just effortlessly, effortlessly too. Yeah, she, she, she was a, she's a one of a kind. We won't see oh, another man, person like her so for good. a thousand years. Yeah. All right, cool. so let's let's watch this one too. Uh, let me turn this down so it's not quite so loud. A thousand years. A thousand years. Mark my words. <laughs> Old state. Mark my words. <laughs> I don't think you should do this. Last year she came to my work. Now I got to show her what I can do. He's here. Ah, uh, flat on the track. What up, bro? For your consideration, <laughs> here comes the Boston Massacre, the Dunkies, touchdown Tommy on them keys, player coach, got it. It was so much when I first saw it, I was like, my Tom Brady, really the back there, you said you were going to support me. Dunkies! Don't, don't go away, my heart, why you dunking, why you dunking, Dunkies! How do you like them? Donuts, I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I had to see it, but I forgive you. Lay us on the track. Are we going to be on the album? We talked about this. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> You're blinded by them pinstripes. Wrap it up. There goes Babe Ruth. Tom, you can stay. Oh. Remember when I told you I'd do anything for you? This is anything. Chill. They're naming a drink after us. <laughs> well, I those pinstripes. I had heard uh, that yeah, they actually sold a whole shitload of those tracksuits. Oh. And they were like sold out 
I mean, oh my Eric, God. there's no. one coming to your house no. right now. <laughs> on the shit, way. Send one to me. I'll be a dunking. That shit was hilarious. It's a it's a wish version. So it's three X. It fits like a small <laughs> medium. <laughs> now that should have been your OnlyFans comment, man. You had one. Nope. You know there was there was a period of time when for all your tr- tight tracksuit needs. <laughs> Oh, he could have a tracksuit special. Oh, yeah. Yes. Sign, Eastern sign European mafia, only grayer. <laughs> Triple X large. Triple X. <laughs> but, you know, in the middle of Brady winning six Super Bowls with the uh, Patriots, it really, I couldn't stand Boston. And it seemed like all that shit swelled up. Everything was Boston, Boston, Boston. Movies in Boston. Um, those two guys about Boston. Everything was Boston. Now that um, the Patriots have sunk and Brady's out, Whoa. I kind of like Brady now. He's oh, right. Brady! I, I hope Brady does nothing but make funny commercials from here on out because he's fantastic at it. I don't know. He signed up to be an analyst. I don't know why. Yeah, that's what I don't where think he's he go. needs to. I mean, he should go kind of Peyton's route. You know, Peyton, was, they wanted him to be a, an analyst too. And he's like, nah, I'm going to do my own thing. So. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if he's got his own thing like Peyton and Eli have sure. on Monday night. You know, uh, he'll have something like that. Maybe not Monday know. night, but he'll have something specific for I, him. I, I don't, I don't, I, I don't want to see him do that. You know, mm. I'd rather see him just be kind of floating around, getting paid millions to do this kind of stuff. You know, <laughs> uh, did you see it? Did you see the uh, the Twitter response or whatever when they were calling Mahomes the goat? Did you see that Ooh. little clip that they had with Brady walking with a bunch of his friends? And they were at, like, the zoo or something like that. <laughs> and they're like, hey, let's go over to uh, this pen. I guess they got a bunch of goats over there. And Brady just kind of chuckled. And it was in response to everybody calling Mahomes the goat now. Yeah. And he's like, yeah. he's got yeah, four he's, more he's got fucking more Super Bowls, Bowls to go. How, yeah. However, the there, announcers yeah. oh, did, like, shit. show. They showed Brady – and the Super Bowl rings, and then Mahomes over like, and over, right? Freaking, right. Like it was a freaking handoff. I was like, yeah, I are, saw that. That was I was like, wait like a minute, the second coming on this. I mean, right. he's not even halfway. Or I mean, Montana has four. You know, he's you know, I mean, uh, yeah. There's some quarterbacks that have made a mark bigger than him right now. Now, now he's mm. got the he's got the possibility of going crazy. Granted, three and five years, yeah. But still, you got to have the team, and that's con- assuming. Andy Reid keeps coaching and everything else is like, and I, and I, and I, those last couple drives, yes, but most of the game, it was like, you know, yeah, three now, average all quarterback. All right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. great. When Sam Fran didn't up. score in overtime, though, and they just kicked the field goal, you knew Mahomes was going to come down and win the fucking thing because yeah. he knew what he had to do. I need a touchdown. I got to get a touchdown. I thought it was going to be Mahomes to Kelsey in the end zone with Taylor Swift standing right there and him running right into Taylor Swift's sweet embrace. And the fireworks (laughs) go off and then Joe Biden comes out and says, vote for Joe Biden. That's what I was thinking. (laughs) Well, Kelsey did do run into a sweet embrace. Oh, yeah. But uh, his coach was not so sweet on that. Kelsey, man. I think he's losing his mind. They both played that off. Taylor's going to make him lose his mind. Uh, No, that's a given. Wait, the only presidential one or the only political one was RFK Kennedy. Jr., baby. That was dude interesting. I was like, they did that kind of retro commercial for him, and I was like, yeah, well, with an old, yeah. it was, it was all kind of interesting, in right? Commercial. Yeah, it was interesting. He, he superimposed his face on the old, yeah, commercial, right? Yeah, it was apparently freaking... his family's bitching about it right now and he he came out well, and gave a sorry not sorry his fam- there's half his family hates him anyway or something like <laughs> yeah that. no shit. I don't know what it is it's really yeah. it's really odd so he he's gonna have a hard time even getting on the ballots though unfortunately because the fucking system is rigged against him oh yeah absolutely and he's so. running at, he's he's trying to do it as an independent yeah, so yeah in right. california alone you have to have like 100k signatures like valid signatures and there's only a certain amount of time that you can get them. Yeah. Florida is a very similar thing too. Yeah, yeah. our our just system, to put a third party on the fucking ballot. Like our give me system a is really fucked that way. So, yeah, but I mean, hey, Democratic Party, ask Bernie if he's in favor of that shit. So you know, but I thought Bernie <laughs> was an independent Party. anyway. 
Democratic Party just is suing RFK right now for the, over that commercial. Are. Over that commercial. And because the super PAC that did that commercial had to have too much coordination with him. I'm like, of any, like, That's neither of do. the main parties yeah. can have, they have no leg to stand on on that. No. As far as coordinating with super PACs. Give me a break. I know. They're right, all crooks. Right. They're all crooks. They're all the uniparty. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> well, speaking of the Super Bowl, military.com ran a story about what each of the services did during the Super Bowl. So I thought it would be, be interesting <laughs> to go over. So the Army, the largest service and most impacted by the recruiting shortfalls, zeroed in on Spanish advertising by buying ad space for a dozen 30-second ads across Univision, VIX, and Paramount Plus which will be broadcasting or streaming the game in Spanish. That is so interesting that they go to that yeah. that uh, audience, man. That's well, just... hey, no, we got a lot of uh, Eric, you have Spanish your statements about the here. Navy. The <laughs> Army has its statements, too. They have their go-to demographic. So, <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. If you speak Spanish and the Army comes out and goes, hey, serve a term in the Army and you can get citizenship, Oh no, that's a that's yeah. something. I wonder what uh, the requirements are. Do you have to have your green card first, or what is that like? I don't know. I don't yeah, know. I, I tried to look up articles on that, and there was no. You have, to have your green, you have to have a green card first before you can enlist. At least that's the way you had to do it, like several weeks ago. Because I looked it up a couple of weeks, <laughs> weeks ago. ago. But I mean, who knows what they've changed in the you never know now. Bastards. Yeah. Well, you've got uh, a potential. You got a potential recruitment force walking through the Texas border daily. So, yeah, well, yeah sure. <laughs> but then, uh, yeah, there's got to be. Man, how will those four nations there. ever inf infiltrate our bases? Oh, we'll just invite them right on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they're already oh, well. infiltrated. What are you talking about? Uh, the Air Force's Thunderbirds did the flyover. Isn't the Allegiant st Stadium enclosed? <laughs> yes. Yeah. So. Yeah. Why <laughs> And it looked, like, that. it looked like AI when they flew over. Really? Did you see it? I, did, I didn't, I didn't like, see it. It looked, it. Like, it looked like fucking artificial intelligence. I said so, that is solely for a television <laughs> audience because nobody right. inside saw it. Yeah. Uh, in addition to the physical flyer, the service is also used. Now, this is cool. I never heard of this. They did a poor job of advertising it. But the Air Force is all, also used Snapchat to create a filter that will immerse fans in the stadium as well as those at home in the experience. A QR code to use the lens on smartphones will be displayed in programs as well as on the Jumbotron at the stadium. Anybody hear about that? Anybody hear that no. you could go do that? Uh, who's this guy? Barry Dickey, the Air Force Recruiting oh, Service's Barry. Chief of Strategic Marketing, said... The front camera places a user in the pilot seat in Thunderbird's uniform, flying Ooh. over an aerial view of Las Vegas. Wow. The back camera will activate the six F-16s in formation, depending on where you are in the stadium. Huh. Never heard of any of that. Well, so, hmm. uh, the Air Force also set up a booth at the NFL Fan Experience inside Mandalay Bay Convention Center, where potential recruits could get information and also meet Madison Marsh, the 22-year-old Air Force Second Lieutenant and Master's Student at the Harvard Kennedy School's Public Policy Program mm -hmm. that was just crowned 2024's Miss America. Wow. Yep. So that she was out there, she was out there pitching the Air Force for him, right? My thing is SpongeBob and that's Patrick her full-time job now. Sliming everybody. That's more my speed. Okay, Nickelodeon. <laughs> uh, a Navy spokesman told Military.com that the thrust of the service's physical presence will be the U.S. Navy Band, which will provide two musicians for a joint military color guard in support of the Super Bowl. The spokesman said that the Navy will air a 30-second in-game Super Bowl commercial in 14 key recruiting markets throughout the country. What would those markets be, Eric? Only fans for all your additional sliming <laughs> needs. Could you imagine? Mr. History. 
According to the spokesperson, the commercials will include a previously Thanks, aired Bob. Navy recruiting ad as well as a new commercial developed to promote the Navy Reserve. The Navy also ran a commercial during the Paramount Plus broadcast of the game. Did anybody know that Paramount Plus was Streaming. also broadcasting the game? I didn't yeah. know. Uh, I love this one because the Marine Corps, which has met its recruiting goals, did not advertise during the Super Bowl. Instead, hmm. uh, it aired four pre- and post-game per- commercials on Paramount+. Plus. Hmm. So Those must have been way cheaper. I, I, so what I'm saying, it I sounds like that. Paramount Plus is trying to undercut and get some coverage here, right? Yeah. So that's what the services did uh, at the Super Bowl. Hmm. Needless to say, I didn't see any of it. So. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't recognizable except the freaking airplanes over the. I, I saw a clothes. replay. I saw a replay of that. It looked like practice. Yeah. I was like, are they just practicing? Or because or, there's nobody cheering. Obviously. That was the weirdest thing, man. <laughs> Aren't they uh, based out of Vegas? Though? Yeah, they came out of Nellis. Yeah, they're yeah. right there, huh? I mean, so, you would hear them obviously fly over the stadium. Now that's where they should have cracked that sonic boom. That would have been bad. Yeah. Oh, that would have been cool. That, you oh. know where that stadium is? That stadium's like right across the street from the uh, from the uh, strip. I doubt they would have liked going yeah. supersonic. Right is it there. off the strip or is it? It's it's, it's off across the, strip. the highway. It's, it's like oh, what a half okay. mile away from the strip, something like that. No, okay. yeah, it's 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 right there though. Like it's it's close. I haven't been there since I since it's been in operation. So, all right. Uh, let's, let's do a good story from the VA. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. No more right, lost money. Exist? No more lot. Well, they're still losing money, <laughs> but this is an actual good thing. So oh. this is kind of some out of the box thinking, which is surprising for the VA. Uh, from Fox news, VR therapy takes veterans back to virtual Vietnam to heal decades old trauma. So it's, it, it's interesting that a whole, this whole thing set up around Vietnam. There's a there's a guy who worked with them. He did some stuff for Afghanistan, but basically they're doing all this stuff through VR gear. So, hmm. a landmark virtual reality app geared toward helping older veterans looking for closure and dealing with traumas taking exposure therapy to new places, to the markets of Hanoi or to the landscapes of Vietnam. Hmm. So, this is a company called Mind M Y N D. Mind Immersive, in partnership with VA Immersive, who knew we had a VA Immersive, right? Part of VA's Office of Healthcare Innovation and Learning, focuses specifically on Vietnam War veterans, digitally transporting them back to places they may have visited during the war so they can work through trauma and discover a path to peace. Man, my concern would be it would go the other direction. You're reawakening these... Bad dreams and memories. Anyone with the brain would think that. Like, how could that's, how could this wow. not go wrong? Wow. Right, right. That's yeah, that's, that's what I thought too. Uh, Chris Bricker Brickler, who is the co-founder and CEO of Mind Immersive, uh, he helped start the company about seven years ago, intent on improving the lines of the el- the lives of the elderly. A path to peace is one of the ways it achieves its purpose. So, a path to peace. This program specifically is for Vietnam. Mm. Uh, It's targeted to those veterans ages 75 and older. He says about 40% of our population of older men above 75 are veterans. That's Let that rattle around for a second. 40%. 40% of men of 75 or older are veterans. Wow. It's that so, shit on a shingle put some life life expectancy I, I, on you. I guess so, but uh, <laughs> that Asian I, orange is working. <laughs> he said some veterans go actually go back to Vietnam or have yeah. over the years, and that's a very emotional trip. But a lot of people don't have the ability to go back. So this project enables those who want to. So they want to go back right. to kind of see some of this stuff. That that sort of makes sense. Uh, right. Yeah, that, yeah, when I yeah. read that, because I, I had the same reaction, Eric. I was like, you just got to like, an image, and he's like, God damn it. I don't see that, but he's like, <laughs> those who want to go back. <laughs> yeah, I know, shit. But maybe but, they go back and they see that it's doing 
good. It's not they haven't destroyed I, the country. Sure. They, well, that's, yeah, sure, yeah, that's, sure. the, good, that's you know. their overarching goal. However, well, yeah, what, what it says to me is they got Jedi mind tricked by some fucking dipshits, and this is going to turn well, into a catastrophe. You never know because that phantom. You ever see any of those phantom limb pain experiments? Uh, yeah. Oh shit! Yeah. I never even thought about this for you, Marty. They what do, only fans is that? It's a it's a Mr. History only fans phantom limb. <laughs> no. But uh, <laughs> phantom pain well, is Mr. History. He basically just pain. puts a phantom like, of the opera mask on the whole <laughs> head of his. You know, that's oh, the pain. I need a whiteboard. I'll show you properly. Either way. <laughs> No, it's it it involves the phantom limb thing is it just mirrors your other hand. Yeah, right. I've seen that. And, yeah. And yeah, that's pretty cool. They put a mirror so you can cool. see the reflection of your actual hand. And somehow it, it tricks um, your mind. And your mind about, like yeah. locks in. And so they're like, Okay, do you have like do you need to stretch your hand? He's like, Yeah, I constantly get pain in my hand. I can't stretch it. And they'll actively massage the other side and it for some reason it tricks your mind into thinking oh there we go I'm, it's it relieved all that pain it's good it's to go fascinating. now. fascinating yeah it's it's, it's really the same thing fascinating with tinnitus they now have the hearing aids <laughs> yeah that will have a chime that your brain starts to focus on the chime so you don't hear the tinnitus the ringing really yeah oh wow no kidding yeah huh. i use i use noise canceling oh. headphones at night when i sleep i put in earbuds um, oh, yeah. I just listen to a podcast or something like that. And that helps a lot with my tinnitus for sleep. Dude, how do you get away with that? With having two young kids there? How, how do you, your no, wife, is, is, does, is your wife elbowing you in the ribs? Like your turn. No, I, what right. I generally do is I stay up late. Like I'll stay up until like midnight and take care of the kids from, you know, basically when she goes to bed around eight 30 till midnight and then it becomes her shift afterwards. And they don't really, they sleep mostly through the night, but um, and sometimes they'll get up at like 4 or 4.30, but generally speaking, you walk in there and you give them their pacifier back and they're back down and sleep within moments. Yeah. Well, keep nice. that habit when they start getting to be around teens so you can discourage <laughs> them from sneaking out. So. Yeah. Um, that's what the goggles look like there. So essentially a VR goggle. Uh, I think that tablet has the pictures on it. Here are some of the pictures that they run. Of Vietnam, right? Huh. Okay, I can see that one. I don't know if that one helps, right? I'm not sure. They, you know, yeah. Uh, pretty. Uh, that one I, either. Yeah, it's colorful. Now this one. Ooh, I can see the the North Vietnamese flag there. Is interesting, right? <clears throat> uh, and then this one too with that boat and the flag. That's there, gorgeous, so. though. It is. It's beautiful. Right, it's on my bucket list now, fellas. Yeah, put it on there. Um, that there. one might be disconcerting to see. Yeah, that's how, how does this like, not yeah. how does this help anxiety? Jesus right, Christ, right? Um, that's where COVID came from. <laughs> <laughs> uh, content being built in the app would enable veterans to meditate on a beach in Vietnam or witness other areas of the country, like we just saw. Brickler said the goal isn't to necessarily bring veterans back to the battlefield, but instead show them that they contributed to something historical and the war was not all for naught. So mm -hmm. there you go. That's uh, I Mike, get that. I think that's what you just said, right? Yeah, until you tell them the Charlie's hiding behind those bananas over there. <laughs> Forget you, man. But it, it, it it's, I don't know. Um, you know, you think you, you know what, you know what's good, Marty, is, is the actual focus on that particular conflict because if you'll remember in the 60s how bad they were hated when they came sure. home yeah right so right. to see it turning around now and them trying to really assist that demographic that's yeah. that's big i think that's important i agree it's about but yeah there's got to be a sense of our government sent us over there we had fifty-eight thousand of us die for this thing yeah and they're doing fine you know are there going to be afghanistan vets who go Okay, I want to go back to Afghanistan under new rule. And like we spent 20 years here, and they pulled us out and it went yeah. right back to Afghanistan again. You know? Yeah, I know. but I don't know if there's any beautiful, colorful pictures of Afghanistan. I mean, may, maybe give it 20 years and they'll stop stoning women for having books. But either way, yeah. 
you know, it's it's funny when you when you see Afghanistan, Iraq, all that Middle East stuff, and you inevitably see buildings crumbled, right? And you're like, when were those buildings ever nice? I'm like, oh, that's when the Brits were in there. Yeah. <laughs> 1940. Like, oh, shit. Forgot about that, right? Uh, <laughs> and then when they left, it all went to pot. So, uh, so anyway, it, it, I, I give the VA credit for reaching out and doing that kind of stuff because the VA is so checklist driven and so restricted uh, yeah. that to do something that creative, that's, you know, that's a great, that's a good step for them. I agree, yeah. especially for those guys. Uh, yeah, that. right, right. Uh, there's another guy who uh, he started a program like this, but he has come on to Mind, uh, the company we were just talking about, as a as a director or something like that. He started one for Afghanistan, and he was saying that they had some VR stuff. For an example, if a soldier got uh, an IED while in a Humvee, they have the ability to like, okay, let's go back to the Humvee VR wise. Here's the Humvee. Let's just walk around it. You know, let's get used to it again. If they have that kind of trauma, mm. and then they they have another progression. It's like, okay, you want to sit in the Humvee? You can virtually sit in the Humvee and work through some of that stuff without actually going down on the motor pool yeah. or getting blown like, up by an actual IED. Yeah, right, right. And I was like, <laughs> that's pretty cool. It's like kind of like easing back in. It's like, okay, I, 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 you know, it's not just in my mind. I can kind of reach out yeah. and and think that I'm touching it. So I still think there's got to be a percentage that, that think the way you and I did Marty, that there's a, Oh shit. It's a weird it's reaction. Tri- right? yeah. Triggering some bad stuff. From back I mean, you know, day. and you know how bad that was too. It, it might be a desensitiz- desensitization thing. Where I, that's it, the first point. two rounds yeah, that's a good point. might be fucking horrible. And then after that, you're like, Oh, okay. But yeah. how, right. how, so how much of easier. a movie trope that was in the eighties? You know, that guy's got, P- oh. he's a war vet. <laughs> yeah. Know? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, there was a little known movie. I don't know if you ever saw it <clears throat> with Charlie Sheen and Emilio Estevez called Men at Work. Did you ever see that movie? Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. Where they were trash men, right? Yeah. And yep. the black supervisor, the black, I can't remember that yeah. guy's name, but he had the trauma from Vietnam. He was like, he's yeah. provoking me. He's provoking me. It was actually <laughs> hilarious. But that was a that trope one. that ran all the way through the 80s, right? Huh. Anyway, <laughs> go watch that, Eric. You'll like it. <laughs> I'll take it's a good movie. It's funny. Uh, all right. Last week, we talked about the Navy waiving the requirements to have a high school diploma or GED, right? Just another attempt to try to get people to join. Well, the Air Force is now rolling out their own idea to boost its numbers. <laughs> <laughs> so from defense1.com which is new i never i never saw that site before but defense1.com the u.s air force is opening a program on february 8th so last week to allow up to 1,000 retired officers and enlisted personnel to return to active duty amid manning shortages yeah. so if you didn't have enough the first 20 years you can go back for another four right is there an Don't, age limit no, that's interesting because well, Putin, I don't. I, they didn't go into an age. You guys did just see Putin agreed to allow his people enlisting up to seventy. Yeah. Well, sure. Yeah, a while ago. Sure. Well, because they're so they're so beat up. Yeah, they're so beat up. They're not beat up. I'm telling you, if you're letting seventy year olds join your military, what the hell? Ukraine is chasing wait, guys wait, wait, wait. down to come back. They're using women the, in their military. The U.S. Air Force just said would let you back yeah, that's in. True. That's right. What and we're not about? in an active war. <laughs> that's a good oh, point. Active, you know. That's a good point. Dub so the, me like they're trying to bring pilots back for the most part because that's they have, where it's, there's a whole list. Yeah. That's I'm where it started. Started. <clears throat> But now they've opened it up to enlisted. Uh, it's called the Voluntary Retired Return to Active Duty, or VRRAD. The program would allow retirees to serve for up to four years. But VRRAD has already drawn skepticism online because it offers few incentives. <laughs> Airmen yeah, who no. rejoin will be <laughs> ineligible for the aviation bonus or promotion. They will return to the retired grade 
and be required to meet physical fitness standards, as well as be subject to PCS moves, baby. According it, to it's a, it's a four year tour, right? Also, yeah, it's a four year tour. But if they want to move you, four year tour, PCS, no promotion, no, no bonus. bonus. Yeah. Welcome yeah, back. You get to come back in. Yeah, we'll feed you. Yeah, it's just. Crazy. Um, are you guys familiar with SkillBridge? Yeah. yeah. Have it's you heard a, of SkillBridge? It's a pretty cool program, yeah. They said airmen who come in under this VR red, they can't use SkillBridge, which helps troops shift to civilian jobs. <laughs> so it's like... Jeez, can they can they eat food? Like, are they allowed to drink yeah, water? Dude, do they it get sounds more like punishment. Like, what's even the point like, of putting this shit out? You know, it's, it's like they all had a bunch of, you know, hands shaking. They're like, that's a good idea. Good job, guys. Good job, guys. <laughs> and then, and then the guy know. comes in and is like, hey, I can't wait to go tell them. They're like, wait, before you tell them, make sure they know no bonuses, no promotions. They might get moved. No skill bridge. <laughs> and they got to be fit. I wonder now go. If lose, go spread the do word. Do you lose your retirement pay also? And disability? I would assume so during that four years. Oh, that's a good so. point. That is right? a great right. point. Yeah, because you're now on active duty. You were you were getting the, the VA. I would imagine that the, the, oh, yeah. somebody the that's going to hit somebody good. in the VA, and they're going to go, "Hey, wait a minute, he's back on active duty. He Yo. doesn't need ninety percent. He doesn't need hundred percent. No, oh, he's back down. Right. Oh, <laughs> the only goodness. reason I would do this Ooh. is if if they God. brought in warrant officers and be like, "Yeah, you're already automatic warrant." Like there is a thing. there is a story yeah. about the Air Force bringing back warrant officers. Yeah, at that AFA cool. the other night they uh, they yeah. talked about that. It's only going to be for cyber and IT. Right, right. Yeah, a lot of so, incentives here, boys. A lot of incentives. as soon as I got it back in, <laughs> immediately the first year, every freaking week I'd be going to sick call. <laughs> now, oh yeah. So, Hey, my, my instep hurts something. now. <laughs> I can't do this right plane. here. I can't even touch this. I, can't I, I had this. that before I came in. It's I played bad. soccer yeah. for yeah. PT, and now I got this burner down my neck. Oh, Dude, yeah. I'd go full out on, on PT. <laughs> well, just wait how many of these guys are disqualified by MHS Genesis. Mm. Oh. oh, yeah, Genesis. Oh, oh yeah, good right. call on that. Right. The, Wonderful the database. System. Yeah. Eric, remember we talked to that recruiter who never got back to us, of course. Yeah, but, uh, the blind. About Genesis. Yep. The Air Force uh, originally launched VR Rad in 2017 when it was struggling to retain pilots. Now the service is reviving the program after <clears throat> missing its annual enlisted recruiting goal for the first time in nearly a quarter century. And as officials project a sh already project a shortage of 4,300 personnel under the current authorized end strength. But retirees likely won't jump to re rejoin a service through the program unless it ups the incentives to lead their civilian lives, according to Ryan Haberman, who is an analyst with the RAND Corporation. Quote, asking retired officers and senior enlisted individuals to come back to active duty status in a billet that is likely far away from their new home of record for a maximum of 48 months is tough. Yeah. His words. Yeah, no you know who... You know who we're we're looking at? We're looking at the guy that's living on the side of the road in a tent, who's a retiree with nothing. He might be the okay. only guy that yeah. would say, "Yeah, yeah sign me up. I got nothing." Right. But how, the rest how many of us, pilots? It's no incentive at all. Like, let's pretend you're a 20 year, what, <clears throat> lieutenant colonel, ma major. Yeah. You get out. You're pulling that. You might be having some disability. Now you got a civilian job as a pilot. You have to work what three days a week? Sure. Four, if that, and you're getting more potentially more pay than what you were doing in the Air Force. A hell of a lot. With less significantly less less life restrictions. And there's a civilian pilot shortage. Yeah. You yeah. Think they're going to be happy about letting these guys. And in. now we want you. To and come they come back, back in for no. Tempo. At a higher ops huh? tempo, you're flying every other day. Oh, come on, man. And you're not getting flight pay. Nothing. Oh, and you have to come back in and take all the CBTs for all the woke bullshit they've been rolling. <laughs> oh, <laughs> good call the CBTs. Yeah. yeah. Hey, before we got you anything, we got two days of you going right. through uh, yeah. uh, CUI training and yeah. uh, sexual harassment. Yeah, you got and, you got hands-on uh, sexual assault training. Uh, <laughs> hands-on. <laughs> 
you can you imagine if your if your marriage survived the military and uh, then you're like i'm right. thinking about going back in right but maybe that's the guy yeah. who just oh. got divorced and he's like f this I'm going back in, baby. I'm going oh, I'm back sure in, yeah. there's onesies and twosies that it would seem like, oh, it's a good idea. But sure. man, for the rest You're, of us, but the, and those are Air the Force wide, wide, you're looking at hundred, maybes. That's what hundreds. I would think. Well, Can't be much I, bigger. I see Chief Major, Master Sergeant uh, Williams working out, oh. staying in shape. He could go he back in for, for four that. years. He shaved for that retirement. Super Chief Master Sergeant. <laughs> okay, See, I'm going to trash talk him a little bit. There, that might be an up yeah. incentive, like you get if you get something <laughs> special of it. But with no incentives, who the fuck is going to do that? <laughs> he put his blues on. All all three of those people at that retirement. First of all, awesome retirement. Never seen a retirement officiated by a chief. Yeah. So yeah. it was for a chief officer. by a chief with, with there was an officer. There was a, it was a proper, king, right? Oh, the full bird was the proper. That's crazy. And that, but that full bird was like, when you retire, I'll be there. Let hmm. me be your proper. Nice. And then he came back and did it. He was good yeah, to his work. Cool. Yeah. Nice. But the one thing that was, I'm calling a little bit bullshit on. All of them put their blues on again. Full blues, full shaved, full everything. No fucking retirement pin. Oh, Ooh, that's not right. That's not right. You know, is it, isn't is isn't being retired, even though you're going back to go do that, right? Um, but isn't being retired, and then you put your uniform on, and you go back, being retired in uniform, isn't that... The guy who graduates high school but goes back to prom. Oh, that's you know, what I'm thinking. College guy, and he's yeah. walking around, and he's as wearing his varsity guy. jacket still. <laughs> <laughs> Letterman Fuck jacket. Yeah. That's his <laughs> Letterman <laughs> jacket. Yeah. I oh, would. Oh, you cutie. <laughs> yeah. And everybody who's there at the prom is like, "Why is this fucking guy coming back? Nobody wants him here, right?" <laughs> you know, I'm gonna get a rash of shit because Good. of this whole Good. conversation. <laughs> Because anybody who's like us, who's her dad, is like, yeah, I hate it when they put their uniform on and they come back yep. and they think they got authority. So Sorensen listens to this. He was like, oh, the melodious tones of Marty Smith and Jake Wall. He goes, I listen what? to you guys every week. I was like, golly, man, you're one of 12. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Keep on. We don't want to lose you. We don't want to yeah. lose you. Keep it going. <laughs> it well, was fun to go back and see everybody though like it was like a family reunion that's cool it, it was yeah cool. that's cool i'm surprised without the retirement pin though that, yeah because i thought that was a requirement if you're going to wear the uniform i, I thought mean, so too yeah. i don't know to be a fact but i thought so yeah you go through and you're wearing full uniform other people in uniform are doing nothing but seeing chiefs yep yeah right you know <laughs> well and and it could be those I'm not kind saying of guys it's stolen valor but it could it be those be. kind of guys who need to go in <laughs> under this program because they're like, I haven't told somebody what to do in years. I need it. I, I need, need it. that authority back, right? <laughs> I need to go back in yeah. and start pointing fingers and sending people running. Jake, Giving did you advice. just tell Chief Williams that he had stolen value? <laughs> Hell yeah, he did. <laughs> it's close. It's close. Watch or, out, or Jake. impersonating, he, he, he impersonating. Might, he might deadlift duty. you to death there, man. He might, yeah, uh, okay. he might strap <laughs> you on with those chains around his waist. Too. I got him on the calves and thighs. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> that boy skips leg day. Oh, you no, got him on the hair. Oh, sorry. Never mind. I don't know. We both <laughs> people still confuse us. Really? Oh, still, man. Yeah. Still. Oh well. He's a wow. bald white guy with a beard. So yes. am I. So yes. I mean, yes. and we're all the same. I mean, I get the benefit the of pigment. not working that's out. Yeah. yeah, that's true. But I mean, he works out like crazy and still gets confused for fat me. So <laughs> I don't know who's getting the bad end of the stick on this one. <laughs> not doing good. <laughs> well, if you're interested, the Air Force said applications must be submitted by January 31st, 2026. 
So we're going to let this fucker roll for two years, baby. <laughs> There's no oh. age limit on this. I, 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 I didn't, one. I didn't run across it. So dude, I'm telling you space force is next. There's a mass exodus of space force. Right. Is now. it really senior NCOs are just like, fuck what, what's the point? Yeah. What's the like the freaking, it, I would only ever stay in for eight. If I came back in now that freaking 401 K is bull crap. Sure. It's 5% of your base pay. Right, right. Not your full entitlements of your base pay. So at the very most, you're getting like five yeah. grand a year. It's not going to be much. That's not, I mean, that's yeah. nothing. Those of us and, who have retired have, have retired because we're sick of 20 years or we push, pushed it to 20 years. Yeah. Or, you know, it's like, I don't feel like running anymore. Or, you know, it's just like. I don't feel like dealing with any more ancillary training, you know. I don't want to yeah. be undercut. Hey, it's time to go, right? You, yeah. you know when it's time to go, it's time to go. Uh, there's nobody who's like, oh, I, I, oh, I didn't want to retire. <laughs> there is still some got the though, fire buddy. burning in my belly. You know, um, there's some, right? I, there's somebody, still. Yeah. There's you know what they should do there's... instead of getting people who retired, they'll be like, hey, I know we pushed you out of the air force a long time ago, but here's your chance to come back. Yeah, well, they already yeah. tried to do that with uh, with the COVID or. Well, yeah, awesome. but I'm talking about. Yeah, I, I wasn't taking the medical. They I know we got you out on an Article 15, but all things are forgiven. Come on back in, <laughs> and you can continue to serve. You might get more takers for that than you were yeah. from a guy who retired. Well, Those are the guys that are extremely made. pissed off right. for getting kicked out by just not taking a vaccination. Well, like, that that's a like whole different. Ass. That's a whole different deal right yeah well anyway well it'd be interesting to see how that tracks so we can yeah uh, we're gonna need to follow up with that I'm, I'm curious to see what those numbers look like all right being fat tuesday and being uh well by the time this airs it's going to be valentine's day Woo-hoo. i know you Happy all VD. got uh, special things <laughs> planned for valentine's day but eric <clears throat> lead us into valentine's day with some military u.s military history <laughs> cool guys i got a great one this time it's uh with a lot of connections to colorado which i thought was pretty cool yes on this day in history february 13th 1861 army surgeon jd Irwin rescued 60 men and was awarded the first medal of honor that was the first medal of honor to ever be awarded and i'll get more into detail the first ever by the, the first Houston? that was the first medal of honor action that's wow. correct Wow. U.S. Army Assistant Surgeon Bernard John Dowling, also known as J.D. Irwin, rescued a kidnapped boy and 60 soldiers encircled by legendary Apache warrior Cochise on this day in February 13, 1861. Irwin's heroic volunteer effort under dire circumstances in the Arizona Territory has gone down in American military lore as the first Congressional Medal of Honor action. It took place before the award even existed. The Medal of Honor, the nation's highest uh, highest recognition of valor, was created the following year during the Civil War. Irwin received the Medal of Honor in 1894. The surgeon volunteered to lead 14 men and a mule train on a 100-mile trek through a blizzard during the rescue effort. The dramatic encounter began days earlier, when a band of Apaches kidnapped a young boy who had settled the Arizona Territory with his family. The the abduction led to a frantic chase by American troops from Fort Breckenridge here in Colorado. That was a fort? I had no idea it was a fort. Yep. Who were then surrounded by the Apaches. The assistant surgeon, Irwin, voluntarily took command of troops and attacked and defeated hostile Indians he met on the way. Uh, let's see. I'm just moving down. I'm getting getting past the bullshit. All right. So he was only uh, he was uh, he was allowed only mules and a handful of men because of limited resources at Fort Breckenridge. Faced with a trek of 100 miles in the midst of a winter blizzard, the logistics of the mission were an improbable as the possibility of encountering the much larger enemy force, defeating them, and rescuing the captivities the captives. What followed on February 13th in Apache Pass, Arizona, was an act of tactical ingenuity in the face of overwhelming odds. 
And this is just a quick paragraph for what it was. With a carefully laid out that's, plan. That's Irwin right there. Look at that picture, man. <laughs> With a carefully laid out plan and a maximum placement of his 14 men, Irwin succeeded in convincing the Indian warriors that he had arrived with a much larger force, causing them <clears throat> to withdraw. Bascom's 60 men were liberated and joined Irwin and his 14 soldiers. The unified force then pursued Cochise into the mountains where they were able to engage him and rescue the captive boy. Irwin was born, uh, blah, blah, and then it just, so he gets a award in 1894. The rest of the story just goes into his history. But the first Medal of Honor action, February 13th, 1861, fellas. Pretty amazing. That's damn good. That's that pretty that cool. That was pretty cool. Yeah, that was pretty cool. <clears throat> and like you, I didn't know Fort Breckenridge was even a fort located here. Well, that's Colorado. because it was in Arizona. Oh, I thought it was here. No, it's kind of northeast of Tucson. It was It was also known as Old Camp Grant. Hmm. Never heard of that. Oh, old Camp Grant. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't the new one. That's where everyone gets Not the new one. Yeah. Yeah, fluff from around. So now I'm curious if there is a tie to Breckenridge here in Colorado to the fort. Maybe not. No, no, no. We have to look that up. Yeah. We don't go that deep. Yeah, it seems like a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, that's a little a detail. Lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, uh, let's uh, since we're going into Valentine's Day, let's not talk about bombing thirty-five thousand Nazis or Germans. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Germans in Dresden. Let's keep it on a good note. So, uh, thanks, Eric. Thanks. Uh, that was a good day in, in history. Uh, thanks, gentlemen. And on that note, I think we'll go end up. Unless anybody has any final and, uh, thoughts. Any final and, thoughts? Yep. Yeah. Nice. Yep. No. no final thoughts? All right. So, so we're going yeah. in depth. Uh, on behalf of all of us here, I'd like to thank you for listening today. Please like, share, and subscribe, and let us know how we did in the comments. And make sure next week that you are not late for changeover. Yeah, you're good. You're calm on that one. I thought you were I, I, I watched the last one. Oh, very good. Yeah. There was no I'm glad, I'm glad we don't have to play that game anymore. <laughs> it would have been awesome if you'd all bought it, but nobody bought it. So, oh, what can I say? Right. Uh, thanks for the week, gentlemen, and I'll see you next week. Right on. All right, guys. Thanks.